day two here in Abidjan, La Côte d'Ivoire. I'm just leaving my Airbnb right now. So that's the apartment building where I'm staying in. And it's a part of this whole complex where there's multiple apartment buildings, this whole spot where people sit. There is a little match where people are playing uh, soccer behind me. And then also a little convenience store all on the property. So that's kind of convenient. Um, I'm just gonna head up again for a patisserie to get some uh, breakfast and some coffee. Probably the same one I went to yesterday because uh, that one was reliable. And then we'll see what else uh, we've got in store for us today as we check out other areas of Abidjan. The area of Cocodiu I'm staying right now is actually right in the center of the neighborhood where it's like, and it's a completely like market environment. So you've got the main market where it sells a lot of touristy stuff, but also people's like produce. It's where I got my hair cut. It's where people are going for like their meals on the side of the street. You can find pretty much everything in this area of Kokoji, but then Kokoji also extends northward. I've been looking at Google Maps and they're like the most fanciest restaurants and cafes up there, uh, residences with broad streets. And uh, I think if you go a little further um, that way, you even get the US embassy um, and a lot of the other European and Western embassies there. And then also on the other side of the markets, we go south, or like we saw yesterday, towards Blocos, and you get more embassies on that side. So we're just completely surrounded by embassies. But in the heart of all these embassies, you find a neighborhood which is feels very uniquely West African. I just got uh, a 200 franc um, cafe au lait on, from one of these carts right behind me. You can get a typical Nescafe or typical Lipton tea for about 100 franc and then with the, the instant milk for about 200 franc. So this is very much um, a very uh, Cote d'Ivoire uh, local market area and you can get a sense of what the city must have been like before all the investment and all the wealth probably poured in um, pretty recently. There's really something for every budget in a single neighborhood in a, a place like Abidjan. Yesterday when I was uh, at Blocos, I went to grab something to eat and I just went to one of like the roadside eateries where it was literally just a family had set up the different dishes that they had prepared for the night and then we're serving it with either rice or a cheque. A cheque, you're gonna see it in like small Ziploc bags all over town. It basically looks like quinoa, but I think it's like grated cassava in the texture of like a couscous or a quinoa. And you see it everywhere, it's like the national dish. So I had that with a, a gravy of uh, some sort of meat. I, I'm not even gonna try to figure out what it was, but it tasted good and it all only costed about 300, 400 francs, which is, maybe uh, 60, 75 cents, you can probably get the same meal at a restaurant for 10 times that price at 3,000 francs too. So everything is just really about who you're gonna be surrounded with, where you're gonna be, what is their air conditioning, is it not, rather than what you're actually eating. Now, other than just places that are obviously grossly unhygienic looking, I pretty much am happy to eat wherever I see that there are a lot of other people eating because that's usually a good sign. Um, I know if it's mostly tourists, there's no incentive for local places to serve really quality food. But if there are a bunch of local people eating there, it means that it's trusted by the neighborhood. There are probably people who come and eat there multiple times a week, if not in a day, and it can't be bad. Hello everyone from Trècheville. So I've actually spent a quite amount of time already exploring this part of town, but I couldn't film because it's been raining so, so heavily. I'm sure you can see how wet the streets are behind me, but it's such an interesting part of town. Yeah. Had some coffee here, then did some shopping. I was actually looking for sort of like coverall that I could wear, like the Moroccan style gandura that I could wear with like shorts underneath and still maintain my modesty because, you know, I have my short shorts. <laughs> And just something to wear when I'm up in the morning or like a bathrobe um, as well as in the evening if I'm just like lounging around but uh, still need to cover up and so I got up my Moroccan gandura I just ran across it because I came to this part of town it's full of markets and shopping areas very commercial part of the city however it's full of migrants from all over North and West Africa so I see a lot of uh, the business is being owned by Moroccans here. I hear a lot of Moroccan Arabic on the street and a lot of stores selling the typical Moroccan um, items such as uh, the clothing, both for men and women, uh, the Moroccan style shoes, which you see behind me. It really makes me feel like I'm back in Meknes. 
and I spoke to some of the, the I spoke to one of the store owners. Um, he's from Fez. I told him I, I spent some time uh, 10 years ago living in uh, Meknes and he tried to give me a Quran just for free and I told him I'm traveling for six to seven months. I can barely carry what I own right now, let alone a hardcover copy of the Quran. <laughs> While I was at the cafe, I also looked up a place for lunch. Lunch is like the main meal I have of the day. And I found a spot, Shi Tuba right here in the market and it was really really good not just the food uh, it was a typical Senegalese uh, cheb which I had with chicken some vegetables and the red rice but it was also just a nice spot it was very hidden I could barely find it hmm? for what? for what? I film myself <laughs> so, okay, okay I don't, I'm not really exactly what that was about, but the restaurant itself was actually really, really nice. You had to go up. It was very hidden. It was like probably in a family home where you had to like go on the side street, take a stair up, walk down some corridors, and then finally open uh, a door into an air-conditioned room, which is the actual dining hall. But the food came out in literally like 30 seconds. You, all you have to do is order whether you want white rice or red rice and then which meat you want and they literally just pull out uh, the food and then hand it to you. <laughs> yeah, all that goes to say is that I had a really really good chibu today and I don't know how I lived 30 years of my life without ever having that mix of rice and spices. It's really really good. I highly recommend if you can go seek out uh, this cuisine wherever you are in the world please do so. It, it might not be as good as it is in this part of the world, but it can't be bad. If you're walking down the streets of Trashville, literally everybody wants to change your money as well. And I don't know why there are multiple people asking me literally one after another, because you take five steps down the street here, you'll be bombarded with every other person wondering if you want to change money. You would have think that they would just assume that somebody else has already asked you. Or maybe they are optimistic and think that you'll change your mind and suddenly find yourself with some money to change. But either way, something to be prepared for. They're not actually asking you to give them money, but they're asking to change money for you for whatever reason. Also a hilarious thing that you'll find as a result of West Africa being a primary destination for the used clothes which get donated from places like the US is that you'll find people wearing t-shirts from that say things in English and they probably do have no idea what they're exactly wearing or endorsing with their clothing. So you'll see people dressed very very conservatively and probably don't drink but they're wearing a shirt talking about good times drinking Heineken or Budweiser same time I just saw a man really really big muscular macho looking guy wearing a black t-shirt which says sister of the bride on it so it's just funny things like that <laughs> I wish I could just stop them and translate exactly what they're wearing <laughs> but it makes for an interesting uh, cultural exchange that way <laughs> when you're walking these streets it just becomes so apparent Every person has got some sort of hustle going on, whether it's out of their home, whether it's a proper shop, or whether it's just setting up uh, something small on the corner of what could be called a sidewalk here. It's really, really incredible. And I'm really surprised that all of these small, tiny businesses are viable. Even if it's buying a little bit of Nescafe, instant coffee, setting up some hot water, and mixing coffee for people for 10-15 cents uh, you find a ton of those businesses going on here there, and then there are other businesses and hustles which I really feel like how are these viable they're definitely not viable because sometimes you find like an individual walking around with like one belt just asking random people whether they want that one single belt like who just randomly like wants a belt so, like in the in the course of your daily life it's just like oh yeah I need a belt right now and it's that one belt. I'm not gonna just like go to a shop that sells a bunch of belts 
but I just want that one belt right now. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it works. Maybe I'm just like not the audience for, for uh, that sort of shopping. Okay, so I've just been waiting out the rain again here uh, having a little cafe under the awning where you can have probably like the best espresso I've had so far in the Cote d'Ivoire, ironically. I'm just waiting for my Yango to show up. Uh, she'll be picking me up here and then we're going to head out to an art gallery in Coco D. I had a friend from Cat Surfing reach out to me and he told me he's heading over there shortly. So I'll try to meet up with him there and we'll check out um, what that exhibit looks like in another part of town closer to where I'm staying in Kokoji. But it's been a really, really fun time here in Tereshvila. I think I'd love to come back. There's just like so much going on and people are a lot more lively and want to talk to you. And you have all these small businesses everywhere and people from all over North and West Africa. So I've really liked my, my morning here. Really, really good time. Currently back in Kokoji in the Fakhuri uh, Gallery and it's incredible. You don't see a lot of explanations here on the wall reading a pamphlet on the author and it's pretty apparent what this exhibit is about. You see the art artist putting his own face into different um, orientalist works and these are very common tropes uh, in orientalist works done by Europe. In this exhibit the artist takes the power away from orientalist artists by literally placing his own face in common tropes of orientalist art as a way to challenge the narrative and retake control from the Europeans. And welcome to a wild Saturday night here in Abidjan Cote d'Ivoire. So I'm just kidding, obviously, because I'm in my Airbnb in the Gandura that I bought today, comfortable having a cozy night in. Abidjan is definitely known for its nightlife uh, here in West Africa and actually all over the African continent. So I'm sure a lot of people are having a lot of fun tonight. As I've been saying before, it's just like taxing mentally to be out all day, um, dodging whatever comes at you all while working in a new language. And well, not really a new language, all while, all while working in a language which is not a language that you're extremely familiar with. And so I think I'm ready to head to bed. I hope you all enjoyed our vlog today, taking a brief look at Trècheville. I would love to spend more time there if I can during my stay here. And also checking out the, um, the exhibit that I visited with uh, Patrick. With that, I'm going to end the vlog today. It's a bit of, of a jumble, but I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.